There's a place, a school, an institution where a professor resides. Listen to words of Professor Buitron. Welcome back. It's uh, Monday and I'm answering another question. And uh, the question was and is, what was your, the most excuse used to stop training and to stop from going into competition? Well, let me put it to you this way. Throughout competition, so I'm gonna divide competition from training because competition takes a little bit more willpower, will, more Dedication, if you want to put it that way. You know, if you're going to go inside the ring, you're going to be dedicated a little bit more than if you're just coming to class. Most students that come just to class usually come twice a week. But those that go into the ring, they want to compete, and want to take that type of lifestyle, they have to do it a little bit more. So what are the excuses towards the ring? What has happened? And, geez, you know, I'm going to go back and, we all laugh about it, but you know, and no discrimination here, ladies, but uh, we call something here the girlfriend syndrome. It happens to women too. It happens to our girls as well, but it happens more often to our, to our guys and it's called the girlfriend syndrome. Here you have, let me tell you more likely what, what it happens. And I'll tell you a couple of stories and won't make, uh, mention any names, but you know, somebody said, why don't you write a book and all the stuff that used to happen in the school and throughout. And we started to at one time and we started laughing. And maybe I will finish it off and make it the last book that I read, uh, write, you know, because I've written 14 books all in the subject matter of Savant and, and Dance Through Savant. And it's the last one we did was on the professor and so on and so forth. But anyway, let me... Uh, the girlfriend syndrome, that's what we're going we're gonna to call this. And it usually happens. And I didn't know how to go with it because, you know, I never forfeited the fight. Even if I was there, you know, whether if it was somebody calling you out in the street or if you, were, if you had a scheduled bout, you were there. It wasn't something that you were going to quit. That was not part of my nature. That was not part of the nature of my trainers. Of, of those that, that came before me, but I saw it when it happened. You know, the first time it happened was in Irving. And we were under the Texas Association of Savannah at that time, it was 92. And we were having the first Metro class. We had 10 scheduled bouts, had 10 scheduled bouts. The boxing commission didn't know how to take us. They didn't know whether we were kickboxing or not. We we're still in, in between that limbo. And they said, you know what, we're, if you're going to promote something, we're going to take you back. Bro. Not going to charge you that much. So they had their cut, you know, that we had to pay for bouts there. And, and uh, so we had 10 scheduled bouts. So before so long, we had to pay them for the bouts that we were going to have. I can't remember how much it was. I think it was 250 or something like that. Remember those numbers who were back then so long ago. But we had so many people uh, that were going to compete. Folks from the San Antonio, Savat, uh, of course, Laredo was going to be representing, Irvin was going to be representing, my school in Irvin, the one in Dallas was going to be representing. And we had a bunch of folks that wanted to go inside the ring. We had 10 bouts, so that means 20 fighters were going to show up. We had weigh-ins the Friday before. We had, uh, I told my uh, guys show up, Irving, Irving Papers gonna be writing a story. Irving News is gonna come out here and interview you guys. You know, tomorrow's a big event, they're gonna show up. And all of a sudden, I'm walking on the gym, kind of, you know, sitting people here and go over there and get weighed in and blah, 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 and doing all the stuff. And, I see a young lady with an older lady 
right next to my, and when, when I start going, you know, you can start seeing, start reading people, you know, you start seeing the older lady had a purse and she was like this, you know, and the other girl was crying. And uh, I go, yes, yeah, can I help you? And he goes, you want to kill my uh, future husband? And I stopped and I looked at her and I said, I want to kill you. Who? And she goes, your future husband. I go, who's that? And she told me the name. I go, you know, he's supposed to be here because he's going to fight. Well, we're here to tell you that he's not going to fight. We're not going to put him through this. And he, he better not do that or else I'm going to leave him and he already knows and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, I'm just stunned. And I said, well, you know, if he doesn't want to fight, he doesn't have to. Nobody's making him. This is amateur. And you see you're taking advantage of him and all this other stuff. And I was like, you know what? I never forced anybody. People come to me and we'll train them. So that was the very first one. That day, out of 10 scheduled bouts, only four showed up. Okay. The following year, we scheduled six, only four showed up again. So every time we had a bout, we had people that were would forfeit. And all the time, the most common excuse was my girlfriend didn't let me, so I'm quitting profit. I'm not going to fight profit. My wife is telling me not to fight. It's either her or me. No, that's why we've always called it the girlfriend so, syndrome. Don't get me wrong, ladies. It happens to you all too. The boyfriend syndrome exists. So when... We came when I moved down to Laredo, and it happened a lot. And I was over here, and I was training folks for the Golden Gloves. I mean, we used to have 20, 30 people that were apparently going to start training for the Golden Gloves, you know. And and here we are, we're training and so on and so forth, and I have everybody in a schedule about time. And we used to have a certain time that I was going to train you at. Apart from that, of course, I give the classes and I used to tell folks, you can come down and we can do the classes, and you can train. But if you want to fight, you can train to compete. The competition training is a lot different. It is. You have to understand that there's conditioning, there's some other things that go involved. So we had a separate time. And here in the school, I remember. Um, you know, those those that have come in understand that we have glass glass block around. And, uh, well, it was a it was a dark day. It was kind of you know fog it was in the dusk, and we're I'm training everybody, and I'm having the pads on one one of them, and I'm teaching them through the. And I started seeing lights, like police officer lights. And I said, probably there's an accident outside, but the lights were like. You know, because, uh, you know, there were, you can actually see them, you know, it was not like if they were inside, you know, we can't stop. Lo and behold, the door opens up and an officer comes in and he says, I want everybody to stop because they just called us that you all are killing somebody. And I stopped and I looked. I said, officer, nobody's kidding anybody here. We're all doing it. You know, please stop. And then another one came in and I recognized him from high school. I said, hey, you know, we used to call him Smiley. And I go, hey, Smiley, how are you doing? And he started laughing. He goes, hey, Paul, you know, they called us and you guys were going to kill somebody. And lo and behold, this lady comes inside, running and screaming. And she slid across the floor and she grabbed this young man's leg. The young man had just come out of, uh, you know, he was a Marine. Oh, and he had just come back out of, he had already done his, his time. He, was, he had just come back out and, uh, and she gra grabbed his leg and she pointed to me and he goes, he's the one that wants to kill my son. And, uh, <laughs> and they, they all started laughing. I go, we're training for boxing. He goes, mom, I'm telling you that. And the guy goes, that student mom, I'm telling you, I'm gonna fight. Nobody's making this. I'm already, I was already a Marine, so anyway, I kicked them out. 
later on, you have that that individual claiming he was kickboxing champion here and there. But you know, it happens. It happens. You know, the the mama syndrome, the girlfriend syndrome, the boyfriend syndrome is there. Um, those are the excuses that would make us go around. You know, uh, I had one one time that uh, had a gentleman that had gotten was going to state. He had just won the Golden Cups and he was going to go to state. I called him up and I said, hey, let's get ready. You know, state's going to be in Amarillo. We're going to have to drive up there. Are you ready? Never returned a call. So I called him up again and I said, hey, you know, we have a long drive. Uh, we're waiting for you. Where are you? Nothing. You know, and during that time, cell phones weren't uh, as popular, you know, we had to dial everything. And we're here and everybody's waiting and we're here in the office. It was must have been two o'clock in the morning because we were going to leave time it for us to get there. You know, it's a, it's a 10 hour drive, 12 hour drive from Laredo actually. And then we had different people were going to drive to certain areas for us to get over there for the way in. So, you know, and, and anyway, make a long story short, the phone rang. It's a girlfriend. And she goes, let me tell you something straight. I'm not going to excuse me. And she goes, uh, he's not going to fight. He goes, because he knows that if he fights, I'm going to leave him. And he's showing his true love for me. And if I, which was pointing it towards me, and if I knew what love was, I would not be put, I said, you know what? If he doesn't want to fight, I'm going to go back to sleep. Let me tell the rest of the guys to go home and go sleep. So we did that. You know, I, later on when I woke up, uh, I made a call to the guys over there and that we had pulled out, and my father had pulled out of the state Golden Gloves. And we didn't hear from him. So about two months later, he walks into the gym with his, with his gloves and he tells me, you know something, Prophet, she left me. Can you train me for, for me to go into the Golden Gloves? And I said, find another school. Go find another school. The more, and you know, it continues. And it, we had another young lady that had tremendous skill, not only skill, the will, the technique, the speed, the cunning, the ability. She was a natural. And I remember she was coming in here and I said, Bring, invite your boyfriend because we've had this problem before. Their boyfriend came in and he wasn't doing that hot. And she started making fun of him. All of a sudden, she calls me the next day and she said that she's not going to come back. Because of the and I said, well, you know, that's your prerogative. Folks, the moral of the story is I've heard these excuses for not continuing martial arts or for not training to go into the ring because of the girlfriend syndrome or the boyfriend syndrome or the mama syndrome so many times that that is the main reason, one of the reasons why I have stopped for a while taking people competing. We do have competitions and it happens all the time. You have to be careful you know, because some competitions don't come back once. Remember, if you're inside that ring, if you're inside, you know, now we have the stick fighting competitions that we have. We have, we have not only the smokers of it, but we also have the championships. You have to understand that you've got three minutes, three minutes that will propel you going forward and give you a great name that's written in stone. You make part of history. And if you leave it, if you quit, you will always be quitting. And that excuse of the girlfriend happens all the time. I've heard it, other instructors have heard it, God forbid. Folks that train people and to go into the world championships, professional boxing, professional 
in professional MMA and so on and so forth, they've heard it. And believe me, those that are world champions, they've also heard it. But the reason they're world champions is because they overcame that. Sometimes they might get mad because they're spending more time in the ring. But would they rather spend, you be spending more time in the ring or in the local bar? Okay? Be careful. Um, when you train and you train in martial arts, your friends, your friends will get smaller. And when you train to compete, it's going to get tighter. And when you're in there professionally as a professional fighter and you're fighting for that profession and you're going up into the ranks, it's going to go tighter until all of a sudden it's just one fist. And that fist is so tight that those around you understand and those around you are the ones that are helping you go forward. Remember that. Everybody loves the champion. A very few can become champions. So don't throw it away if you have a championship, a tournament. Don't throw it away for a night out the day before. Celebrate after you win or if you lose for you to understand what you did. You know, whether or not you win and you compete, you've already made history. Okay? So, once more, we all laugh about the girlfriend syndrome and the boyfriend syndrome and the mama syndrome, mama boy syndrome, but it happens. They exist. And um, be safe. Continue sending those uh, those questions. We get a couple of stuff here for tactics on 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 Thursday. We go tactical Thursday, tactics on Thursday. That's what we're going to be calling it. We're going to be touching base on in the ring. Out, out the ring, kind of been inside, outside little scoops of how we can do it, how we can go from it, or how we can be within it. Little ideas that you can use, especially for, for in the ring, your training folks in the ring. And, and please, if you like it, like, share, subscribe. We've got so much information coming out. We have a great year planned ahead of us. We've got good, good people behind us. And I want to thank you all for motivating me to continue pushing this forward because it's this channel is you guys. All right. The next time. Peace. Come train at the best kept secret of Laredo. Bowie Tron Academy. 956-401-4868. Savat.biz.